These cookie cutter shit homes, <laughs> I hate them. It's Everything, part of our freedom. No. <laughs> a lot of people are not used to public transportation, so we don't know that we need it so much. We don't know that we're missing out on yeah. it. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is your favorite couple from the Midwest, and today we're going to be taking a look into something that is about the U.S. Today we're going to be taking a look at why public transportation sucks in the U.S. I chose this one because this channel, we've done some of the videos from them, and oh, okay. it has a lot of you, so I'm assuming it that's must why. be popular. This is a topic that a lot of you guys are always talking about, or at least a lot of the videos we've done, you have mentioned it, and it is very true, and I've always kind of made an excuse for it. That like because we're so far away from everything that we can't have public transportation. Yeah. But the more and more I think about it, the more I realize like there are other countries. For one, I will say like one country is China. China has some very impressive public right. transportation, oh. and they have some that cross literally cross across. Uh, some that literally cross across the whole country. Huh. Anyway, that's what we're doing here today. Hopefully this video will explain to us why the public transportation over here sucks so much. I know one thing that I pointed out uh, to her was at one time there was public transportation in the U.S. Like that's what you used to travel. Even then it was still very direct from like one city to another. Nothing else. Nothing no, no, no. I, I get city. that. I get that. But like almost every small town, the train was the main mode oh. of transportation. It wasn't up until automobiles that the train was then transferred more over to cargo. Ah, and also the fact that, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, it's probably pretty commonplace everywhere, I would think, but a lot of our railroads run pretty much right next to our roads. Our roads. And speaking uh -huh. of trains, I actually can hear one whistling <laughs> right now. That is like hilarious. a mile and a half, two miles down the mm -hmm. road. Anyway, guys, let's get right into this video and uh, see why the U.S. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is Indiana and this is Scotland. Both have a similar number of inhabitants, a similar size, and a similar population density. But here's Indiana's public transportation system, and here's Scotland's. You want to get to Cooper, a town of 9,030 miles from the capital? That'll take you 55 minutes on a train that leaves every 30 minutes, or an hour and 40 minutes on a bus that leaves every 40. You want to get to Anderson, a town of 50,030 miles from Indiana's capital? Well, you're out of luck. The only option is the car. Antiquated technology, safety concerns, crumbling infrastructure, and non-existence, it's not hard to argue that the U.S. public transportation network is just not good. Vast swaths of the U.S. have no option but to drive because the alternative just is not there. This has consequences on the environment, on economic mobility, on where people live. The consequences of America's lack of solid public transportation almost defines American culture. But it wasn't always like this. The United States... I know that's one thing that is definitely true, like those roads. I'm sure people have seen U.S. roads, but that's exactly what they look like. <laughs> and there's one thing that's definitely a downside to not having public transportation is the backlog. Rush hour. Yeah, rush hour. Now, now I'm sure I have seen some like videos of like, you know, New York City Trains or City. London and like, what is it called? The Underground? Oh, the London Underground. Yeah. I think yes, there. It, it's tunnels. completely packed and like crazy, but I still feel like for the amount of people, it's still faster than like if you put all well, the people in cars. Well, with the trains, it's like they're always on a schedule, so they can't really get backed up unless something wrecks or breaks down. I think. Yeah. Where with cars, you know, some someone wrecks or just gets a flat tire, it's going to slow everything down for miles, especially during rush hour when everybody's going the same direction all at once. And I do feel like uh, trains are probably a lot safer. Probably. Well, I mean, this kind of happens, but. <laughs> uh, that's one thing you don't really have crime that happens in your own car but well, other than an accident <laughs> almost defines american culture but it wasn't always like this the united states once had the best oh real quick what i was gonna say though is one thing with rush hour if you potentially you know a lot of people will commute like an hour into work yeah and so you're literally losing like two hours a day of driving and yeah, you can like nowadays it's a lot better because like you can listen to podcasts and stuff. Yeah. But at least on public transportation, you can like read a book or watch That's a video, true. or you can be more engaging. Or, or... That's why self-driving cars are so popular now. Well, yeah, but that's <laughs> you know? no, that's a whole different. They don't let you. They don't let you do that. I know you still have to do some steering. In culture, but it wasn't always like this. The United States once had the best public transportation system in the world. It was the admiration of countries worldwide and an essential factor allowing for the successful Western expansion of the country. It all started with this, the horse car. Now, there oh. were urban transportation systems before these horse-drawn trams came along, but they weren't cheap and they weren't fast. Roads generally weren't paved and there just wasn't the economic demand for high free- Is that like the first bus, I feel like? 
Yeah, probably. Because I think that that doesn't quite not the same as I can't believe right there, if if that is true. If that is true. I know not all these videos are like 100% accurate. The fact if the U.S. E even at any time was the best in public transportation and probably, I don't know, other people... I'm would not too I don't know if that's true. Because we did like develop really fast. What was I it? Know, the engineering age or whatever it was called? Industrial age. Industrial age. Industrial age. Really but a lot. still, to go from the best... Well, it's kind of true, a lot of things. <laughs> but still, to go from the very best to something and like now we really just don't have it. Yeah. So I'm really interested to see why. Fast. Roads generally weren't paved, and there just wasn't the economic demand for high-frequency service because these carriages were rarely faster than walking. But on rails, these horse cars were fast, and one horse could pull a full load of passengers thanks to the rails. In its heyday, there were over 6,000 miles of horse car lines in the U.S. In That's comparison, cool. the combined mileage of every tram, subway, light rail, and commuter rail system in the U.S. nowadays is 5,416. In so 1880, less, yeah. 50 million people lived in the U.S. Today, over 320 million. Around the turn of the century, many of those horse car systems were electrified. There were then 11,000 miles of streetcar track nationwide. The systems were absolutely everywhere. Even tiny towns like Bangor, Maine and Berlin, New Hampshire had streetcars. So what happened? How did the U.S. go from having 11,000 miles of streetcar to 200? How did the U.S. go from having solid public transportation in towns big and small across the country to how it is today? The decline... Obviously, he's done his research that I haven't, but I feel like 200 in the whole country is a little less. Because I know in Kansas yeah. City alone, there's probably at least 5 or 10 miles... Because they have it a through the, the main downtown area, the streetcar system, like that. I don't, do, are they on electric Yeah, they have, they have the electric track thingy that you... I guess I haven't seen. In Kansas oh. City, I don't know. I know there's buses still. No, I know, but what I'm saying... Well, no, because they're automated. Like, there's no driver. Like, they're just the electric... Are they? Yeah. They just stop and then go. I haven't gone to Kansas City enough lately. Definitely, they had a lot of those in Boston. Yeah. Those self-driving, like, they would just, like, pull up. And it was like all on a timer. Oh, yeah. And then it would take off and it was just... <laughs> Get it in time. Which, again, for me, since we don't different. have public transportation, it's like very different. Yeah. It's almost like going to a foreign country, like literally. <laughs> miles of streetcar to 200. How did the U.S. go from having solid Street public transportation boy. in towns big and small across the country to how it is today? The decline of the streetcar began just after the turn of the century. That was... Okay, just for a record, just for anyone that... I hate this. <laughs> Those kind of neighborhoods suck. I hate these neighborhoods. It's so Look, hard to find people. So you have these big, huge, massive townhomes. I'm going to guess, depending on the location where these are, probably probably four hundred to $600,000 homes. You have no yard, garden, whatever. No privacy. You just have a massive I house. I guess California or Florida because I yeah, see Yeah, that's what trees. it looks like, but... Which is going to up the... I'm just saying, like, these cookie-cutter shit homes, <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> that, if you're trying to visit a friend, they all look the exact same. You can go down yeah. the same road several times and get totally lost, especially when they're not direct north-south roads. Very annoying. The decline of the streetcar began just after the turn of the century. That was when the automobile came around. Mm -hmm. By 1920, the car was starting to get to an attainable price point for the everyday individual. That was the real threat for the streetcar. Not cars, but economical cars. So the streetcar received another blow in 1929, the Great Depression. There were fewer people with jobs, which meant fewer people who needed to commute and fewer people who had the money to pay for transport. So no, I'm pausing, pausing a lot, but I love the anarchy in this scene. Anarchy? Oh, yeah. just the people there's walking no, and crossing? There's no nothing. There's just do. Just do as you want. <laughs> like, look, he's just driving over the rail. People are walking. There's horses. There's everything going on here. Uh, there's like no direction. I don't think they had driving laws. And no, exactly. fewer people who had the money to pay for what? transport. So many lines were just not profitable anymore and closed. But then the streetcar received a stay of execution. World War II. You see, mm -hmm. during World War II, the U.S. had the lowest unemployment rate in history, as low as 1.2%. There were tons of factory jobs to support the war, so practically everyone who wanted a job had a job. That meant that there were tons more people now going to and from work, and even better for the streetcar, there were rations going on on rubber and gas, which diminished the popularity of the car. 
But something else was going on through all that, something more sinister. Sometime in the 1920s, automobile technology became advanced enough that the bus became cheaper to operate than the streetcar. Streetcars cost very little to power, but they do require a lot of infrastructure from overhead lines to track. Buses were more flexible and required almost no infrastructure. And the bus had some powerful friends, the automobile companies or more specifically, General Motors. General Motors went and bought dozens of small streetcar companies across the nation and turned them into bus companies. They oh. removed hundreds of miles of track across mm. the US and supported other companies. To it's exactly like that right there. It's like, we, you could have exactly that yeah. right now. Yeah, just off on the side of the road. No, that's in between them. Yeah, yeah. So you're like absolutely. oncoming and on, like, there's no reason why we couldn't have that. They removed hundreds of miles of track across the US and supported other companies doing the same but it's not like they didn't have a good reason to do this. These streetcars were not economically advantageous. Buses were faster, cheaper, and at the time, they were the modern and fresh transportation method that the public wanted. Nearly every streetcar system nationwide was replaced with a bus system. In addition, the streetcar companies were almost all commercial, so if and when they failed, many local governments set up public subsidized bus companies. So that's how transportation got bad, but why did it stay bad? Well, mostly because of the car. America is the country of the car. It grew up as the car grew up, so its cities were I mean, built we have for invented cars. This. Think Dallas, Phoenix, Los Angeles. You I mean, we have invented the production of it, so yeah, we mainstreamed it. Anyway. Henry, well, we didn't. Henry Ford uh, made the assembly line. That's his greatest right, right, contribution. Right. Which is what mass produced it, made it affordable for yeah. the everyday man, and so of course we had so many of them. America is the country of the car. It grew up as the car grew up, so its cities were built for cars. Think Dallas, Phoenix, Los Angeles. You can't survive in these cities without a car. Remember- Okay, I mean, that's definitely not true. Those are very widespread cities. No, I know, I know, but I know like Los Angeles has a, I'm pretty sure now it has a pretty good, at least subway like system. buses and subways oh, and stuff, yeah. as well as it's so compact. Cause there's like, I think 40 million people that live in the area. like. You could probably live most of your life just like within, you know, a few miles. Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe a lot like Chicago. I think mostly you could just walk, though. That's what I'm saying. You could walk or bike, yeah. scooter, moped. Like, there's there's definitely... They're, they're bringing these cities up, and I know I've talked to people from, like, big cities yeah. in the U.S., and they don't even own a car. Yeah. Because it's either you walk, scooter, Uber, yeah. whatever. That and parking is usually a nightmare. So I know. I'm just, saying, though, like, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, though. I'm just saying. Still, a good reason. I don't know how accurate cars. that is, though. Yeah. Phoenix, Los Angeles, you can't survive in these cities without a car. Remember, the United States is centered around the idea of personal freedom. With a car, you can go anywhere at any time. So politically, cars have historically been associated with the idea of personal freedom. Just like the Republican Party votes to have strong that. national defense, allow gun ownership, and preserve small government in order to promote personal freedom, they have always worked to promote the usage and ownership of cars. That means they often voted in favor of subsidies helping the auto industry, most often in the form of indirect subsidies lowering the cost of gas. Now, that was fine when cities were small, highways were new, gas was cheap, and climate change wasn't even a concept, but that's not the case anymore. Cities are just of a size where they literally cities cannot have. support their entire right. population driving. You can't fit more road infrastructure in many cities, but you can fit more public transportation. Cars were available to the common American much earlier than the common European. So the US set road policies early that allowed for large, smooth, and well-functioning roads. Oh, While the US sense. was building its magnificent roads, Europe was building their public transportation systems. The high car usage in the US even has to do with zoning. You see, European cities tend to have less oh, strict heard. zoning laws which allow for businesses and housing to intermingle. The US zones its cities much more strictly. Houses are next to houses and businesses are next to businesses, yeah. which means that the distance between houses and shops in the US is much greater. That was a really good point, actually. Yeah. Now, there are places where you can actually have a house right there in town, but it's usually like an apartment above a building. Yeah. That's also a, a store or something like that. That's what I was going to mention. And it's a lot more expensive to do that. Yeah. Or if it's like an older or a smaller town or city, you can have plenty of houses like right next to Yeah, they make a lot shopping, of apartment type But it is true that most of your... Residential I'm houses. I'm just trying to think, like, even our small town, like... You have all the businesses on that one main yeah. stretch, and then all the houses like over on this side of town. It. <laughs> yeah, 
Now, obviously, uh, also what came into play, though, is obviously we're in newer country, newer cities and everything. So a lot when they really started to build up cities, um, they were able to, I'm sure, incorporate roads at the time. Right. Whereas Europe... Well, a lot know, of cities didn't even get born until after the car has been around. Like, even our city, I think, is only 100, 150 years old. Yeah, no, that's so what I'm saying. Been like, around Europe is already was well established and stuff and you know to make all these big huge massive roads they'd probably have to tear through whole yeah sections of city so instead of doing that you know they just went with public transportation oh oh for european yeah. ones yeah 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 which means that the distance between houses and shops in the u.s is much greater therefore americans have to go further more often the most ah. demonstrative fact is how the two places approach parking in the US, zoning laws specify a minimum number of parking spaces per building. In Europe, the laws specify a maximum number of parking spaces. The three cities with the three lowest car ownership rates in the US all have something in common. Boston, New York, and DC are all old, rather compact cities with decent public mm -hmm. transportation systems. They Since they were cities the before stuff. the car, yeah. they're built much more like the European cities that have such good public transportation systems today. Simplified, public transportation gets worse as you or go- Especially since those cities were definitely made after the European ones. <laughs> Yeah. Designed by those are some of the founding um, cities. Yeah. Yeah. What is that called? Original colonies. Yeah. They're. I oh, think the those cities. Colonies, yeah, yeah. Were part of. Well, the... DC technically not, because it was carved out later. But anyway, whatever. Yeah, it's still in the same area. Systems today simplified. Public transportation gets worse as you go further west, since western cities are newer. But <laughs> here's the most important sentence of this entire video. Access to transportation is the single most important factor in an individual's ability to escape poverty. That is not a subjective claim, that is a fact that emerged from that a Harvard a study. Sense. Someone who lives right by a subway stop is astronomically more likely to find a high paying job than someone who doesn't have a way to get around. Individuals in poverty generally live in poor neighborhoods with few job opportunities, but with reliable, accessible, and inexpensive public transportation, these individuals can get all across their city to where the jobs are. So, a good way to evaluate the effectiveness of a public transportation system is by how well it serves the poor. DC, for example, does a good job of this. The poorest neighborhoods have the greatest proportion of their residents within a 10 minute walk of a metro station, while the richest neighborhoods have the smallest proportion. Hand in hand with their move back into the cities, millennials are shunning cars. Car ownership among young people is at historic lows, and the urban youth is relying more and more on public transport. Some cities like Portland, Kansas City, Detroit, and DC are turning back to streetcars. Done right, streetcars can drive huge increases in economic development. That's They're more of a symbol of modernization that entices residents, developers, and businesses to areas. Portland, for example, I mean, I'm not a big, like, uh, you guys know, I'm not, like, a big, huge person, city person. Yeah, when we went to Chicago, I did really like Chicago. I, yeah. I could I could probably live there for a couple of years. It was really nice. That being said, I could definitely see if I was to move to a city, and I was like, oh, shoot, you know, it's going to be a pain to drive anywhere. Like, having the public transportation would be a draw. Yeah. It would because be, like, a like, huge okay, benefit. I don't have to worry about having a car if I don't need one. Yeah, I mean, I probably would always still keep one because yeah. it's the U.S. and <laughs> It's everything. part of our freedom. No, you hear? <laughs> no, it's just because everything's so far away. I mean, if there was literally public transportation everywhere, I probably would have a. I probably would still have a car. Just but maybe case, not two or three. Just in case I had to go really far, but at the same time, it would. It's a nice. We always have to take our cars with them, either mechanic or checkup or insurance. I mean, it's definitely a huge expense having a car, uh, as you guys know. But still, like if it was just all public transportation, I definitely would probably consider. At least just having like one small little car for emergencies or something. Yeah, it's still one of those things though. Because our country is so vast and large, you like being having that knowledge and freedom saying, I can go anywhere. I don't have to be restricted to a schedule for a bus or a tram or only what their track goes to. I mean, I do think there's some places uh, in other countries that like every 10 minutes or something like they're like you pretty much cannot miss a train like they're right. extremely fast I it really you... depends on the neighborhood because when i was uh visiting my sister in germany she lived in a little bit of a rural neighborhood but during the day they still had a bus come every 15 to 30 minutes but during the night it was like every hour mm, I gotcha. well i know in colorado when we went there they had uh, a public bus system that was free for everyone but i think you have to wait but so i think up to 30 minutes and sometimes. it only covered like three surrounding towns Still better than nothing. Yeah. I mean, we, we still hopped on and, like, 
And it was like a 30 minute wait. They're more of a symbol of modernization that entices residents, developers, and businesses to areas. Portland, for example, has had an estimated $5 billion in extra economic development thanks to its streetcar. New streetcar systems are being built all across the US in cities like Milwaukee and Oklahoma City since they're finally making money again. Not from their fares, but from the jobs brought by their existence. People didn't want them a century ago, but streetcars finally make sense again. Public transportation is instrumentally important to the success of cities. You can almost be sure that a good city will have good public transportation and a bad city will have bad public transportation. Public transportation increases economic mobility, decreases carbon footprints, and increases economic development. So the only question is, why not build more of it? I think the answer to that is uh, a lot of people are not used to public transportation, so we don't know that we need it so much. We don't know that we're missing out on yeah. it. Yeah, so I think that's a there's not a big draw for it. There's nobody's really asking for it a whole lot because we don't know what the, we're missing. The one thing now again, I'm a little disappointed in this video only because it didn't cover. It talked about the U.S., but it was all about cities. Yeah. Which honestly, when it comes to if you're a city over. I'm gonna say hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. You, you there should be public transportation. Yeah. Like just legit. Like at least in the city limits, hands down, every city should have public transportation because there's like no reason not Good to public transportation. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not like taxis or anything. Because like a lot a of us still have one. buses, but the buses don't make very many stops, or they're just crummy. But the one thing it still didn't cover was the towns. You know, I know America is yeah. massive, rural. and the uh, and the rail system would be insane. But the fact that they have built roads everywhere would mean, I would think that they could make a train system. Even like a small town, even if it was only once, I don't know, once an hour. You could have, you know, several trains go out like during the work hours, like, you know, between six and eight. Yeah. And then maybe have one come back at noon. And then you could have like all the rest come in. Like, in the evening. I would that think would probably break like, down a lot work. of traffic. Because a lot of people is just like, oh, well, the bus or whatever leaves it around this time anyway. I can just take that in. And it goes right near wherever my work is. Or from there, I can take another smaller one and get to work. And even even if you had it, even if you brought it down to, let's say, like a county seat, which is, we live in a county seat, you could have, like, the surrounding towns. Like, it wouldn't be the best ideal thing, but you could still have them drive. They could just drive, you know, a few miles to that town and then take the train up to save their time, you know, so they could read or whatever. And then they could also escape, like, the, yeah. the traffic jams. But then I think when you still put it all the time together so if, say you're here someone has to drive to here just to drive all the way over here i don't know if it's out of your way it's going to add more time plus if you have to wait for this schedule i don't know i i feel like there is still a lot more freedom in a car no there is but i'm just saying and for us gas is a lot more affordable depending on where you are in the country but even then it's still way more affordable than over there and i think you know that's part of the reason we don't well need. i mean the gas isn't because we're all switching to electric but the, the overall though i still think my take on it, especially as an American, especially with how much money we spend on stupid, stupid crap, <laughs> uh, every city should have public transportation and yeah. it should be nice, comparable to any European country. Preferably reasonably priced, if not free. Well, no, I, I mean, it, either way, it should be comparable to any European country. I'm yeah. fine with that. And then when it comes to out in the rural areas, I definitely think it's possible. It's just a matter of how much that would cost. Yeah. So yeah, that's up that's up for debate. Guys, let us know what you think of the video and let us know what your opinion is. Obviously, a majority of you may not have been to the US, but you can still share your experiences with your public transportation and just I don't know, make fun of the fact that we don't have a very good one. <laughs> I don't know. But that's all I have for the video. It was, yeah. it was it was a good it was interesting. I actually learned yeah, it felt so, educational. Several of those things because I had no idea about the early stuff, like the whole strong thing. I had never it seen that. It makes total sense though why we don't have it though because of the automobile and that that really does. Well, yeah, uh, the automobile industry like probably backed every. You know, they probably were helping fund the roads and everything. Yeah, so of course they had their they incentive. Want, to they push wanted the their automobile so Which there is one thing. I'm I, 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 sorry, guys. I know this video is long, but <laughs> there's one thing. I, I don't know. Rant. I don't know if about other countries are like this. I don't think they are. But it is insane how many vehicles are here. Like all these dealerships. I have to. If you guys are interested, I will try to make a video of it. Drive by a couple. I would drive through because you don't have to get out or interact with people. I would drive through like a bunch of dealerships. Like yeah. even almost every small town has their own dealerships. I don't know, guys. The amount of just un hundreds of cars, thousands. Just there are thousands of vehicles that not are brand spanking new, not being used all around. 
there's so many vehicles that are just sitting in lots. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So let us know, guys, if you'd be interested in a video like that. Uh, anyway, guys, sorry for, I guess, Ranting. the long rant. <laughs> uh, you guys definitely have public transportation better, uh, for sure. Yeah, but... just by those little clippets. We should try to find one that's more of a comparison of, like, this is how they do it, this is how we do it, which is kind of non-existent. But this did cover some of that, which I like. Well, I just want the out of the city. Well, no, I like that idea, too. Yeah. I would like one that also focuses more on the rural area. Yeah, like how do you guys I, handle public exactly, I, in rural areas? I think they have it. Of course, your version of a rural area is still twenty miles from any big city. <laughs> well, no, it's not twenty. I think they have. Don't I think they have a train what? from uh, London to Edinburgh. Oh yeah. And I think it's like eight hours. Yeah, that's a long. And so I mean, that's stretch. definitely comparable. I mean, that's like across the state. Yeah. So. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, guys, sorry for the long rant. Uh, let us know what you thought. Uh, We'll see you in the next one. We'll see you in the next one. Please be safe. Take care. Look after one another. And cheers.